the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the vital issues of the hour, brought to you three times weekly. A presentation of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, a distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. Lawrence Pertig, columnist for the New York World Telegram and Sun, and other Scripps Howard newspapers. And Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our distinguished guest is the Honorable Morris J. Tobin, United States Secretary of Labor. In this spontaneous and unrehearsed discussion, the opinions are necessarily those of the speakers. Mr. Tobin, I believe that you've been uh, Secretary of Labor in the Truman Cabinet for about three years. Is that right, sir? That is correct, Mr. Huey. And you are from Massachusetts, former... Native governor. born, lived there all my life. Tonight, sir, I think that our people would like <coughs> some of your views on inflation. There is um, some of us in the country who are, are afraid that labor unions are partially responsible for uh, our inflation. Uh, what are your views on that, sir? Well, <coughs> I would say that uh, labor unions have been most cooperative in establishing a stabilization program in the country. Labor unions, the AFL and the CIO, appeared before committees of Congress recommending a control program that would stop an inflation. <coughs> they agreed to accept wage stabilization. And I would say that if there is one uh, segment of the economy that deserves praise for their cooperation and support of the program, and the legislation that uh, uh, for uh, stabilization, uh, that credit should go to the trade unionists of the country. Well, now, Mr. Tobin, uh, <coughs> the uh, leading unions uh, have escalator clauses. Their wages go up as costs go up. Uh, now, when that happens and costs increase, uh, prices go up again, and since there are only 16 million members of labor unions, and only a few of those have escalator clauses, wouldn't you say that those who uh, have the escalator clauses are profiting at the expense of those who haven't? Well, any program has to be approved by the Wage Stabilization Board, and uh, I would say that uh, the formula that has been laid down by the Wage Stabilization Board is one that will uh, protect the country from inflation unless the cost of living advances beyond its present level. Well, Mr. Tobin, Mr. <laughs> defense, uh, defense Mobilizer Wilson, Charles E. Wilson, estimated himself that uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, defense effort will take 20% of our national product within the next year or so. Mm -hmm. Now, that means we'll all have to consume less. Now, if we all have to consume less, and if certain members of the strong labor unions get the same amount, won't the others suffer? It doesn't mean that we will have to <coughs> uh, consume less, Mr. Fertig. The, at the present time, we're con about 7.5% of total national production is going into defense. It is estimated that the maximum, according to the figures I've seen, would be 20% is near enough, but the estimate I have is 18%. But we must remember that we had room for expansion within the economy, that we're going to have a substantial increase in steel production. Uh, within a year and a half, Which it will be up 20%. We're having a tremendous expansion uh, in uh, 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 aluminum production, and the, uh, most of it being produced in the standby facilities that were abandoned well, during the war. Mr. Tobin, Rubber facilities and the like have been taken back, but by increased work week and the like with existing facilities, America could uh, superimpose upon the economy before Korea uh, 12 to 15 percent, I would say. 
Mr. Tober, no nation in the world mm -hmm. has ever increased its product production in one year. Anything like that figure. Our normal increase would be at the rate of two and a half percent a year. We might get up to three or three and a half. But 18 percent or 20 percent is impossible. And if that is impossible, and we must consume less, and certainly if there's a hot war, we'll have to consume less, then escalator clauses are definitely inflationary because everybody has to pay more as wages go up and prices go up, and those few people profit at the expense of the others. Isn't that true? Well, uh, let's take a look at some of the other factors that have contributed to inflation. Uh, our wholesale uh, commodity price index went up 56% in a period of about three months. And as a financial editor, you know that that you is You mean so. the spot price, not all commodities. The, the overall spot price. Uh, Phew, the limited <coughs> number of commodities. A very uh, limited number, not well, all it's commodities. it's quite substantial. It runs to about 50 items. Well, I should think Mr. much Mr. less than that. Mr. Uh, and in a short period of time, that went up 50% with no controls of any kind whatsoever. Now, the increased productivity uh, increases that you refer to, that uh, the escalator clauses based upon increased productivity uh, have been defended by Mr. Wilson, the president of General Motors, as not an inflationary uh, factor because he expects through increased efficiency to have these small, and they are trivial increases based on increased productivity amounting to but very small sum each year. He expects an efficiency in his operation to uh, take up that increased cost. Mr. <coughs> Secretary, to sum up on this point, sir, uh, do you anticipate uh, increased more inflation in the country? <coughs> on the basis of the present stabilization law, unless it is amended as recommended by the President, I expect to see a decided increase in the inflation. And, and We've had a slight decline last month, but we have not begun to feel the full impact of the defense program, as has been pointed out by Mr. Pertig, and that's going to be constantly on the rise. It's going to create a greater purchasing power in the hands of more workers. There's going to be an increased work week. It's gradually going to go up the scale. And Do as a result, with this increased purchasing power, unless there are firm price controls, we are headed for inflation and the cost of living is going to go up decidedly. That's the, the <coughs> next point I wanted to make, sir. You, as a matter of fact, you expect the cost of living to go up? Unless uh, <coughs> the cost of living, under any circumstances, I think we will have a creeping inflation. But I what see. I would like to avoid is a runaway inflation. And I believe that if the amendments that have been proposed by the President are enacted, that we have an excellent chance of stopping a runaway inflation, slowing it down to uh, a creeping inflation. And you think that the labor <coughs> unions are, are trying, are doing their part to uh, forestall that inflation? I do think that they deserve the credit of the, the uh, uh, support and approval from the people of the country for their willingness to submit their own salaries and wages to a wage stabilization board. Let's Didn't they walk out of the last uh, board, Mr. Tobin, because they weren't uh, getting everything they thought they should get? They didn't really cooperate 100 percent, did they? Uh, in a democracy, uh, uh, cooperation works two ways. Uh, they did come back. They had strong differences as to the basis upon uh, which uh, a basis upon which the wage stabilization board should be set up. But remember, they did favor stabilization, whereas many other factors in the economy. Many of the big business people of the country, many big business people did uh, uh, try to uh, support a sound stabilization program. And yet some of the most powerful big business people of the country were against controls of any kind whatsoever. But you forget to state, uh, Mr. Secretary, that the attitude of people who are against controls is simply this, that inflation is caused by an increased supply of money. And if the government which is the only one who can increase the supply of money, increases it, there will be higher prices, whether there are price controls or not. Price controls never work when the government inflates the money supply. Mr. Secretary, uh, no, uh, I'd like to make uh, the money in circulation increased all during the last war. But we had a most effective uh, con uh, set of controls that uh, resulted in but a slight creeping inflation during World War Number Two as contrasted with World War Number 1, 
when we had one of the wildest inflations that America has ever seen. World War II, <coughs> black markets, uh, and unavailability of materials, well, and all black that. black markets uh, came in the very latter end of the war. The black markets became rampant, I would say, after the termination of the European phase, up to the time that uh, controls and no were meat, wiped out Secretary. in November of 19... Let's be honest about meat. Meat was deliberately held off the market. Meat was deliberately held off the market in the month, the whole month of October uh, of 1946. There is no question about it. You could travel from one end of America to the other, and you couldn't find meat on the counters. I've heard that excuse uh, before, Mr. Secretary, but well, it doesn't sound Well, I want to point something right else to out to you. You couldn't get soap. And the day after controls were taken off, there wasn't a store in America that didn't have all the soap that the American people wanted. Let me ask one last question. There was a great strike pulled at that time, and it was most unfortunate and created a great inflation. There were tens of thousands of people involved in the meat process. They all didn't uh, enter into a collusion and strike. And the president himself, President it, Truman himself, was forced to say that price controls don't work on meat and they don't work on anything else when you need them, Mr. Secretary. Let me ask there was one of the greatest strikes ever perpetrated by big business in America when they were bound that they were going to get controls off. And they did hold off commodity after commodity that did appear on the shelves of American grocery stores the moment that the controls were taken off. And that was in the month of mm. October, 19, uh, uh, November 1946. Well, uh, Thank you so much, sir, for being with us this evening. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. Lawrence Fertig and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Morris J. Tobin, United States Secretary of Labor. On a clear night, if you lift your eyes to the star-bejeweled heavens, you share the feelings of primitive man who stood in awe of this wondrous display and sought to read his destiny in its light. It's a fact that the ancient astrologers were the first to stimulate interest in the art of accurate timekeeping. We at Longines are grateful that the founders of the Longines factory elected to make watches of only the finest quality and that the generation preceding ours faithfully carried on the principles of the founders. In 85 years of watchmaking, Longines has acquired not only reputation and honor, but the fine watchmaking skills that come only from generations of experience. The Longines watches now being shown by fine jewelers throughout the world, reflect in every detail of performance and beauty, the perfection that Longines watches have attained, which explains why Longines alone among the world's fine watches has won 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medal awards, and equally important, highest honors for accuracy from the great government observatories. Throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that beginning this week, our program is brought to you three times weekly, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So won't you join us Friday evening at this same time for The Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, <laughs> distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display the emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. CBS Television Network.